Are you satisfied with the current standards of item storage? Some are primitive, whilst others are well organized and automated. Well, I'm not. The primitive method is far too unorganized, and the traditional method of item sorting centralizes everything and takes away a lot of building potential. So what I propose to do is create storage spots around my base that are themed to a specific group of items. This gives my build projects a function rather than just being empty shells. And that brings us to today's episode. In this area, I am going to be building a giant tree to store all my wood related items. But before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to ask for your support. I'm a very new channel with an ambition to make Minecraft and YouTube my full time job, but I can't do that without your help. Subscribing and liking my content if you like it will help push me forward towards these goals and giving me feedback in the comments allows me to continue improving the quality and content of my videos over time. With all that being said, let's jump into the video. So to recap, I'm going to be building a giant tree in this area right here. It's going to be huge and incredibly challenging to do in survival. First, I need to create a pathway to the location of my tree entrance and just create some accessibility in general. I really love bringing things together like this. The stairs are done and now multiple areas are connected together. So I finished this initial layout and I think it's looking pretty good. This is where the actual tree is going to start from. This is where my entrance is going to be. And I've decided on which wood type I'm going to use. The final two contenders are spruce and dark oak. The winner is dark oak. The reason for that is if you strip them, look at the differences in texture color. Dark oak looks more like the unstripped version. So when it comes to using a gradient, it's going to look far better in the design than the spruce will. So the next challenge is to go and cut a whole bunch of dark oak logs and collect the leaves as well. I've been cutting down trees for about three or so hours now. This is how much I've got. My shulkers full of dark oak logs and pretty much the same with the leaves. Now with the leaves, I may need more. I'm not too sure, but the dark oak, I think I'm going to be fine with. Now what I need to do is actually start planning the layout. So I do need to dig out this area here, but first I kind of want to have an idea of where the tree is going to go so I can actually plan the terraforming around the tree layout. So I'm going to do that now. All I need to do is design two types of roots for the corners and for the straight parts and then I can simply just mess around with them a little bit so they're not exactly the same. I'm actually making this more difficult for myself. I think I'm just gonna get rid of a, another big chunk of this first. And with the magic of editing, there we go. And that actually took me a lot longer than I would have liked. Now let's plan the outline for our tree trunk. To start off with, we've got the start of our first root. I've made that 11 long and now I want to start creating a circle. Just repeat this pattern now all the way around. And now we have a circle, pretty much. Okay, the trunk is done, and now I just want to quickly do my roots this way. This is the lower part of the trunk. This is where the roots are going to go and connect to. There's going to be like this curve going down. So this next part, the pattern that you choose to use is really up to you, but you can follow along with me if you like. The first part is going to be three long. The second part is going to be two long. And then the third is going to be a one. And then the next one is going to be one. And I'll do another one and then I'm going to start going up. So now I've transitioned to going up instead of out or in. Now we go one, two, then I'll do another two and then I'll do three. And there we go. I think that is perfect. That looks good. Now we have the circle ready. It is the perfect height, which is good. So now what we'll do is I'll do the diagonal and then you've seen one of each side and then I'll just do the rest off camera. Okay, so with the diagonal part, I'm actually going to start from the the tree trunk itself because it's going to be a little bit easier to to kind of guide so i'm going to start this one lower and it's going to come down by three and now we need to go diagonally so from here we'll go two let's go down two again let's go down one and then we go down another one let's do another one then we go two across there we go 
that I think is a perfect diagonal. If you want to copy that, you can have a pause. Now I'm just going to go finish the rest of them. I am done with the root outlines on all sides. So now the next step is to thicken out these roots to turn them into actual roots. And what we're going to do is we're going to start like here and we're going to trace this line, but we're going to stay mostly underneath this line. So this line is going to be just above this one, but we are going to do some both sides. What we don't want is to be completely symmetrical. So we can have some variation. So for like for this side here, we went up one there. We can go one up here on this side instead. And what I would also do is, I mean, you can do this later, but I would also fill in these gaps uh, so we don't get any uh, mob spawning. Yeah. So basically just keep tracing this like this. And then when we start getting to the top, just close it off like that. And that is one portion of the route done. So we've got three layers so far. And right now we are going to leave it as is. So that way we can go and do the rest of them and then decide how we want to take this build further. For the diagonal part, it's very similar to this, or it's pretty much the same kind of process. The difference being, ideally what you need to try and do is keep track of which is your first, second and third line. That's simply because we don't want to start going off shape. We want to kind of keep that diagonal route going in the right direction. And that is the diagonal side done. It's not looking too pretty right now, but give it time and it will start looking really, really good. All right, now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. It's time to fill in these gaps. So what we can do here, just fill them in like this. And then if these are a little bit thin, we can bulk them out a little bit and add some more variation to these roots. So that is now one part done on the bottom anyway. And then we just connect these pieces up as well. You can see that this, this is too thin. It looks a bit odd. So we can bring this out and make it a bit thicker. This is the part where you just get really creative and create some character to your tree. Like no one is going to have the same tree as you. If you copy someone block for block, then fine. You'll have the same tree, but there's, you don't need to. You can literally have as much creative input as you like, and you can't really go wrong. For me, I think that is looking pretty good and that's the roots done i am extremely happy with this obviously there's still work that needs to be done after the tree is complete and we need to work on making it a bit more detailed but overall this is perfect this is exactly where we want to be right now the next part is to build up this trunk about six seven blocks four five six we could do seven and now you should have something that looks a little bit like that but that definitely looks too boxy so what we need to do is give it a little bit of detail. So we've got the scaffolding set up, go to these corners and these rough parts and just change the shape a little bit. We can do this pretty much all the way around, add some variety around the whole build. I finished that element. You can't really tell what impact it's had because the scaffolding is all the way around, but trust me, it would make a huge difference. It really will. Now we need to actually create some longer branches, kind of similar to what we did with the root, but the difference is we're going to be curving up slightly and we're going to be extending out rather than going up. We're going to go two out and then I'm going to go three out and then I'm going to do another three out Then I'm going to go four out and then I need to decide how much more I want to go from here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six out. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think that is a good size, but I do realize I am going to have to cut into that mountain there. So similar to the roots before when we traced the outline, this time is a little bit different because we're going to be going one above instead of one below. So from here, we go like this, just like that. And just like before with the roots, you can also add variation so that they're not exactly the same. And then because the top is open, we can actually close this up. Uh, what we can also do is we can thicken out this area here to make it look like it's more connected to the tree and not just sticking out with no support. The diagonal part, I have gone with a pattern of one, two, three, three, and then four. And then similar to before, kind of just bulk this out. It doesn't need to be too perfect, but we do want to just get around and thicken this branch up a little bit. Just create myself a little platform here to help out. And just having a look from down here, I may have made this one a little bit thicker than I needed to, but it's something I can tweak later. What I'm going to do now is jump into a time lapse and get this section finished. <laughs> Thank you. 
I have dug out this massive area and it looks incredibly hideous. And yeah, that's that's gonna have to change in the future. But for now, this is the tree episode. This is layer one of the branches, and we've got to do another two layers of these branches, but they get smaller and smaller, and the tree will get thinner and thinner. So now what we need to do, we need to kind of find our original outline, and then we need to extend it up. Let's say this is the original outline. We bring this trunk up about another eight blocks from where we left it. So all these gaps that you see, we're going to put our next lot of branches in between. I've extended the trunk a little bit, and I've also extended these roots a little bit to make them look a little bit more like they can actually support the weight of this tree. With this section of the branch, we're going to try and go diagonal in between these branches here. And the process is exactly the same. We get our dirt, and we're going to start going diagonal. This time, you definitely want to try and avoid going too thick. As you go higher in the tree, the branches get smaller, they get weaker, they get thinner, right? In nature, that's how trees work. The higher you go, the smaller they go. And at this point, you could even start creating some finer branches in between the gaps, creating something for the leaves to hang from. As you can see here, there's still a few tweaks we need to do. We need to get rid of the dirt blocks and we need to fix a couple of the branches. Some of them need extending out a little bit and some of them need bringing down in height. But overall, this is looking absolutely fantastic and we are now pretty much ready to start adding leaves. But before we do that, we just quickly need to add the center branch sticking out the top of the tree. This branch will support the leaves and allow us to create that dome shape at the top. When placing the first portion of leaves, simply cover all the logs. And then you should have something that looks a little bit like this. It looks very weird right now, but this next part will start bringing life to our tree. Which by the way, I've decided to call Spirit Tree as an homage to RuneScape, the game that took my childhood. Now start to thicken out the branches and trunk with leaves. At this point, you could create a dome shape and leave a hollow center, but I prefer filling the whole tree out with leaves. This way the tree will look more natural. And eventually, if you place your blocks right, then what you'll find is you'll start to get this dome shape on the tree. Now, I know mine. It's a little bit rough, not perfect, but it is looking incredible. A few little tweaks here and there will absolutely make this tree perfect. Oh, and I also reduced this ledge down a little bit. It was looking odd so close to the leaves. My next step is to build into the tree. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to remove this root and we're going to be creating this archway into the tree. So that way we can access to the tree. You don't have to do this. It's up to you. If you're just building the tree for decoration, then you can leave as it is. But for me, I am putting the storage inside. I'm actually going to create my archway out of blackstone. I have this leftover blackstone and I've got a bunch of slabs. So I'm going to use those. I have finished digging out the entrance to the tree and I've also been playing around in creative and I have myself a build palette. So I'm going to go in with mangrove and dark oak and then a bunch of decorations. For the actual entrance itself, I'm going to be following the second archway on this diagram as a template. That's my template shape and then I'm going to obviously make it nice and 3D. Unfortunately, the footage for the rest of the entrance design has been corrupted by replay mod. I have a constant issue with losing footage when using replay mod, but this is a new problem I haven't encountered before. The recording time for some reason has turned negative, whatever that means, and I could only salvage some of the footage. I am going to get on with the rest of this build. So first of all, I want to mark the other entrance, which I've worked out to be about here. And now what I want to do is I actually want to create a supporting system. I could just create a roof, but I don't want to do that. I actually want to use this design, get rid of the dirt at the top and use this design as a feature. That is the beginning of that done. These are gonna go all the way to the ground. So these can actually come all the way down. That is the support uh, for this part. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up. The support is gonna go to the very top. So the first set of supporting beams can come straight out. And I need to actually put some temporary blocks down. Let's get some dirt.
Look at that. That looks really good. I really like that. Now we want to do the same thing higher up, like much higher up. Okay, I think that is good enough. Let's mob proof the area so we don't get creepers dropping down below. Look at that. That looks so cool. That looks so much better than just putting a roof on it. It's supported. It's well lit. We ain't going to get any mobs dropping down. And if we want to do anything up there in the future, we can. The next step for me is to start digging down and placing the stairs as we go. I now have this lovely big space to do a lot with and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tunnel in from my base. So I already started preparing this tunnel and I want to make sure that this goes all the way into the bottom part of the tree base. And there we go. I have managed to tunnel in. Anyway, let's get on with this next part of the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an outline. You see this layer of stone right here? I'm going to change that all to black stone. So these sections right here, I'm going to do a little bit different because what I'm going to do is put a big nether balls on both sides with a little bit of design on the front. They're not going to be useful we can't actually go into them but i do want the never portals to go here there we go there is the platform for the end portal to sit on and let's do the same on the opposite side and that is both never portal platforms done uh, so now i think it's time to actually put on the never portal maybe have the actual portal but only three blocks wide there we go so five across i will have to go outside the tree afterwards and fill in these gaps now i am using a vanilla tweaks mod pack so i can actually create whatever shape never portal i like and it will light i don't know if this particular size is going to need that mod pack but just in case you were wondering like how did i do that this is it i just realized that that I have made this too big. I only wanted three blocks in the middle to be lit up and now I've got five which I do not need and it's going to ruin the shape of my tree from the outside. So I'm going to have to painstakingly remove the two sides. So my, my idea is to have a, a nice design blocking the entrance to the nether pool so nothing can get out of it. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the warped fence and some polished blackstone. Like so. That's the nether portal complete pretty much. So I just light it and I place the final piece. Oh right, that is both sides done and they look so good. All I've got to do now is come on the outside and patch up these parts of the nether portal that are sticking out. There we go. All patched up. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. The portal particle effects are actually coming through the tree. The tree is called Spirit Tree and now it's got particle effects. That's so cool. Oh, okay. The next thing I want to do is actually start adding the support beams and start adding some shape to this room. So I'll add the supporting beams going all the way down. And that looks good. That is really great support. So now all the beams going up are pretty much supported by this layer right here. Now I'm going to put some pillars here as well, but I actually need to dig out these walls. Okay, I've dug out a portion of this wall. I'm going to put a pillar here and I'm going to put another pillar here. And I think what I'm going to do is extend this staircase out by one. So it's going to be four down. And I think that'll actually look a lot better. Look at this. I was just messing around with this area and look, they can actually come and brew and just sit in the portal which i'm okay with but then maybe some of them have crossbows which it shouldn't be too big of an issue to be honest but that's that's pretty cool i've got some life in this building now okay so i have been playing around with some designs and i think i like this so these are like sections in the wall where i can put stuff inside where i can put like chests or features or something so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and just do this on all four corners of the room Okay, step one of the detailing is some banisters. So let's just bring some walls out like this. No, I think that looks alright. Okay, and next we're going to add some detailing around these sides. That's looking a million times better already. I'm going to add some banners to the sides. Now in the future, I'll probably change these to some design. But for now, I'm going to leave them blank because I don't know what I want to use. And then on the sides, I will put some buttons like this. All right, that looks absolutely amazing. OK, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the string of fences going down like this. And I'm going to drop it about two below and then we'll hang a lantern from it like that. And then what we'll do is we'll put some armor stands here, like this. 
but we'll put them diagonally. Right now I'm going to leave the armor stands blank because I don't have that much diamond armor on me. And also I was thinking about waiting for the armor trim to come out in 1.20 and then we can have some really nice designs going around this build. It is looking good. I like the design so far. And for the final touches on this top layer, I'm just going to place some plant pots with a little never flower in there. Or whatever we call it. A little crimson fungus. That looks amazing. And that is the top half done, I think. I don't really think there's much else I can add to it now to improve the design. But it's so much life in here now. Look at it. It just feels so different already. Okay, now on to the bottom level. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower the center part of the floor here. I've left this little line in the floor here, and I think it looks pretty cool. Next, I think I'm going to install a bunch of chests on top of here. And they're going to stick out at the minute, but that will change. That is looking good. This is going to be the main storage where all the main logs go. Now what we can do is actually box these in. And now to add some more detail, we can put some composters here with some leaves and then a random trapdoor like that. And then also what we can do here is place down some buttons and some signs like this on every corner. That looks really good. And just to improve this design a little bit more, we can also put some trapdoors on the sides of these, but different trapdoors. And there we go. That looks absolutely amazing. Uh, in a little while, what I'll be doing is I'll put some invisible item frames here with the items for each section. And that will look really cool. And that'll be that pretty much finished. And for the sections underneath the nether portals, we'll put a feature and some storage. Put bookshelves like this. We'll put a lantern on here and we'll put a lectern here with a booking quill. And now let's paint the back of this with mangrove and then put some trapdoors here and then some chests. How's that look? I like it. But to make a couple of little changes, I'm going to add some walls here, like that. And then I think for this mangrove at the back, oh, not that one this mangrove here to the blackstone. Yeah, that looks much better. That's really nice. Okay, next we've got these two sections here. Uh, for this one, I've already cut out the openings where we're gonna put some mangrove wood like this and just fill it up. So I'll put two chests on here, two chests here, and then one going through the middle like that. That looks pretty good. All right, and now let's decorate these pillars like so. And this one. Now the last section to do is this one here. And then all we've got to do is just repeat on all four corners. I think what it needs to start with is by getting rid of this and replacing it all with mangrove. Put a crafting table here and a chest here. Flower pots at the back and some flowers inside. I think in the future I'll change one of the flower pots for candles, but I don't have a source of wax right now. Anyway. And we'll put some barrels up here for some extra storage. And to top it off, add some slabs there. All right, so now this is it. Now I just need to repeat on all sides. This next part, I have an idea for a pulley system. So basically, I want to put a dispenser in here like that with a chain coming out like that. And that kind of makes it look like that this floor can be lowered. So it's like an elevator in a way. And then what we can do is just go around, fill up with black stone like that. Yeah, that looks like a pulley system. It looks really cool. And then to top it off, we can get a composter like this. That looks really good. I love it. Next, we can put some bookshelves in these sections right here. And then what we can do is put some chests on here. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think that works well. It works nicely. Now for the pillars. I like it. I feel like I could put something else in here, like maybe like here on this section, but I'll have to have a think about it because I think if I put something here, it's going to be too much in the way, but I do feel that the space looks a little bit empty. The final sections are going to be these hallways. So I think I'm going to leave this section blank for now. So actually what I'll do is I'll just, I'm just going to close this off. But these sections, 
I do know what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to embed a compost into the ground here. And then we'll have a couple of leaves going up like that. And then I'm going to put a couple of trap doors here and here like that with some leaves on top. And then on this one, I will hang a chain like that with a lantern on it. And then underneath here, an armor stand. And that is the shelf complete. And the top, I think I will do in Blackstone. Okay, and that is done. Now we are almost ready for the grand finale, which is labeling our chest. But before we do, I just want to quickly touch up this entrance a little bit with some chains like this. There's some chains dangling there. Looks pretty cool. And now for the grand finale. So as I have mentioned before, I am using invisible item frames. So I put them down like this. You can't see them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them all the way around like so. All I'm going to do is just label these like that. And now I know that's oak. I know that this is spruce and I know this is dark oak. And on this next side, we'll go with birch, acacia and jungle. And on the side after that, we're going to go for the warp the crimson and then mangrove. And on the final side, we're gonna use pink wool and bamboo. Pink wool for the cherry blossom tree that is coming to the game in 1.20 and the bamboo for the bamboo blocks that are coming in 1.20. And there's an empty space here in case Mojang decides to add any more wood blocks. And guys, that is about it for this episode. We're done, we made it this far. This episode is taking me over 50 hours to make. If you like this video, then please subscribe and like this video, it really helps. I am a new channel and that support really does go a long way. Additionally, if you think that I need to improve on anything, then please let me know in the comments. And if you think that there's anything that can be added to this design that I might have missed, anything that might might go well with this design then please let me know in the comments as well and i'll definitely try it out thank you so much for watching again and take it easy